Hello and welcome to C1 Part 7, Programming a Modular iOS Controller. We just finished C1 Part 6 in which we programmed the ZRC system. And adding an iOS device is actually very simple if you follow the instructions that we recommended from C1 Part 6 and built your program of your Zigbee remote control using modules as opposed to standard one-way IR libraries. And so we refer to our system design schematic again, or a typical system design schematic. Now remember, this isn't really going to fit into this traditional key digital multi-zone system. The Zigbee remote control and the modular iOS build are more intended for single zone applications. And what we had just programmed before, imagine the client saying, well, can I control this and can I have it on a handheld device? And what we're pro programming now is saying, well, let's make this step up to your iOS device controlling the system as well. Because it's not just the audio video with the compass control, there's so much more surrounding that simple uh, entertainment device. Um, as far as lighting, HVAC, shade, security, and more, as we've seen through that Zigbee remote control. So how does it work when we add in the iOS device? Well, remember, as we told you before, connectivity counts, because now we're going to build that zone connectivity tree. And that zone connectivity tree is our way of saying, okay, we have this room, and we show it in the uh, actual project as the garage because that's how it was imported from the Lutron system. But we have the room, if we follow this tree, the hierarchy, and in that room we have the video, lighting, and security categories, if you will. Those are the things happening that we're controlling through Compass in that room. So, so <clears throat> in the video system, our television is uh, hung on the wall, and on that Input HDMI 3, our AV receiver is connected. And into that AV receiver on input 1, the BD input, we have our Blu-ray player. On input 3, the game input, we have our Apple TV. And input 4, <clears throat> the SAT cable input, we have our TiVo Romeo device. In our lighting system, that Lutron uh, lighting device is actually imported we now will import the XML from that Lutron device and it will create automatically the graphics, the bidirectional macro sets and get functions and the variables that are needed for that just by dragging it in. So that's one thing you'll see that is going to be a little different from the Zigbee remote control as far as in order to get that bidirectional communication from that Lutron device in the system. And then finally, we have security as well, which is where our Vista uh, 20 panel comes into play. And finally, we'll also compile our project in that programming step or that programming tab as we moved across from left to right. We'll eventually reach compile project where if you press one of those buttons to select device, a device to view a device will automatically have those device selection macros on there as opposed to manually creating them as we did on the Zigbee remote control. And the activities, which is on the far left of your iPad, where we have video, audio, lighting, security, shade, climate, etc. Any of those unnecessary icons are removed when we compile the project as well. After doing our programming, it becomes time to load that program into the iOS device so we can test. Now, if you recall, you can't connect a hard wire into an iPad and load the project in that way, right? So we upload from our cloud. Uploading the project to the cloud, download the project into the iPad from the cloud. Your device ID, your iPad or iOS device needs to be licensed with the KDCSL X1. And once it gets through the gate, confirming that it is licensed and you reach 100%, it'll tell you that it is successfully uploaded so that we'll go into our iPad, enter the Compass Control app and press registration, then update project. 
So without further ado, let's enter Compass Navigator. So now that we've loaded the project and uh, successfully into the Zigbee remote control with uh, both Zigbee communication and line of sight IR control, we want to add an iOS device to the system. And adding the iOS device is going to be super simple for us actually because we've stayed in a modular programming type the entire way through. So I go over to my uh, uh, set up controller step here and I'm going to add an iPad into the system this time. I know my device ID number and we have an instruction uh, guide on that if you need to reach out to Key Digital Technical Support. I add that controller in. Now <clears throat> the only um, additional step here is importing the Lutron XML because the Lutron XML allows us to collect bidirectional information um, to generate our graphics automatically, create the uh, compile the bidirectional driver and import the variables as a result of that driver. So I've extracted the XML report from the Lutron uh, repeater system. I just have it on my uh, on my desktop here, and I find that, and I will add that. Now, if you don't know how to extract the XML report from your Lutron repeater, well, first of all, you should completely program the Lutron system. Um, second of all, there is a PDF available online to show you how to do that. Now, what's important is that it's the XML collected from the web browser, not from the Lutron software where they can create a report. It makes the XML look a little different, and our bidirectional driver is written as a result of the, uh, specifically, the browser collection of the XML report. So I added that in, and it gave me this Lutron. And I just need to correspond the IP address with the one that's already in the system and working. So that's 1.90. Now, without getting too advanced here, you'll notice that the password is uh, the password and login is different for the uh, the import we just did versus the Zigbee one. We actually purposely did that that you have two different um, users, if you will, authenticating the Zigbee repeater. It helps to uh, keep everything nice and fast instead of having to disconnect uh, when you're controlled by the Zigbee remote or directly from the iPad or iPads. So <clears throat> we're able to now um, go into assigning zone and the assign zone and zone construction steps again are uh, important steps if you're using an iOS device. In the Zigbee remote you could actually totally bypass that or in the future when we begin automatically creating that device selection macro on those blue device buttons of the Zigbee remote control, then you'll have the option to go ahead and assign zone or zone construction for, uh, for your system, even if it is just Zigbee. Now we've added the iPad and you see we actually begin to see an iPad here. And in the assigned zones, it's actually given us a zone already. Why? Because that was the name of the zone in the Zigbee program, excuse me, in the Lutron program. So if I expand that zone, you can see it has the lighting already on it. Um, so I could either just work with that or choose any other zone by double clicking and now adding that to the system. But again, this uh, modular based programming is really designed for single zones. So we'll just work with what we have here. I could easily rename that zone as well in the uh, property cell. We also have security in the system. So I add that in and then I'm able to construct the zone, the connectivity of the zone in the zone construction step. So our LG display, of course, goes to the video parameter of the uh, zone. And if you recall from our guide earlier, the AVR was connected to HDMI 3. The Blu-ray player connected into the Blu-ray input. 
the Apple TV connected into the game input and the TiVo Romeo connected into the SAT cable input. I can now collapse this tree if I'd like to and move over to auxiliary where I do have my Vista panel on security. The ZRC Lutron is just going to stay where it is. The ZRC Lutron is really only about the Zigbee remote control and as I demonstrated earlier in the working demo that's already taken care of. So as long as we have the Lutron here in the lighting we don't need to connect that ZRC. We shouldn't connect that ZRC in the zone construction step. Controlling flow is already taken care of, isn't it? Uh, except for one thing. Um, these, the iPad needs to go just into that project, just like we did with the very first step, dragging the master controller into the project. We just drag that iPad into the project as well. And then finally, the Lutron will also, very important here, just go into the project name. It doesn't go back into the light, shade, HVAC. Those are device ports. The device ports are only necessary when you um, ha are dealing with the Zigbee remote control. The Lutron IP here, the one we imported as a result of importing that XML, gets controlled directly from the iOS device, not through the MC1000. Because remember, as soon as you add an iOS into the system, that iOS becomes a brain for all of its functionality. So now we have the Lutron in the system. Its IP address is set correctly. We go ahead and uh, again, if you'd like, flow test is a way to uh, test um, commands for devices at, uh, through the appropriate port as they're connected now. Uh, we skip that to compile project. We'll say, yes, I do want to save. Compiling project allows us to automatically put your device selection uh, macros on those device select buttons. Compilation successfully done, very good. And it brings us in here, which is where we previously were after pressing edit system, right? So same thing, it automatically jumps us in there uh, as pressing edit S system. So you may recall it from when we were in here interfacing uh, uh, with the Zigbee remote. Well now I select my iPad and I can see all of my pages here in fact. And so if we go to the Apple TV, this module on that button, the left button has the left command, of course, right? So that's what you're looking at there. And you could uh, feel free to explore all of these pages. Um, and as you go through, see all the buttons that are on them and these sorts of things. Now you can't really edit this until you were to customize the system though. Here's your Vista panel, and you actually get bi-directional feedback in that uh, window there, where right now it just says ready to arm. So now, everything should work. We go ahead, and while we're on the internet, we can upload. So uploading is different when you have the iPad, right? Uploading, you press upload system project. Save the project, sure. I have my username and credentials here. Of course, these uh, correspond with the company folder that I uh, am part of that organization and that my iPad has been licensed within. Go ahead and press update project and it'll pull forward our update window. And begin. And we got various uh, information inside these packets that you see go through zero through 100%. Um, packet four and five generally carry more images than the other packets, so those typically will take a little longer than the others. Very good, project successfully uploaded. So now we'll switch over to our webcam and update the project in the iPad before testing it out. Now that the project has completed the upload into the company folder of the Key Digital Cloud, we can go to our iPad, press registration, and update project in order to pull that project into the iPad. So how does the iPad know what is the latest thing in the cloud for it? Well, it all begins with that device ID, of course. Remember in Compass Navigator? We entered the device ID 08AB6F93F494, 
So this device here goes up to the cloud and says, hey, here's my device ID number. What's the latest thing up here for me? Because every project that goes in the cloud for the device ID has a timestamp as it goes up to the cloud. So let's come a little closer here and you'll see the updating in action. It moves generally taking about 60 seconds or so and it kind of works the same way that Compass Navigator did which was with packets. Some of the packets in the middle, packets 4 and 5 I believe they were, have more image files in them and whatnot so they generally take a little longer than the packets we have at the beginning or the end. Looks like it's completed now so we hit start which will synchronize information to the MC1000. It advances once that's completed and it is asking me here to enter my login information for my Lutron system. I just need to do it the once because now I can tell it to reconnect automatically. Brings me to my home page where I can tell it I want to filter to just the video devices and let's turn on the television for example here. So the module for the television has the functionality you would expect. You have your volume controls for example. Okay. Um, we have menus and whatnot. And on the right hand side we utilize what's called a list functionality, a list element in order to have additional buttons in the same pro uh, amount of real estate there. Looks like we're currently watching our Blu-ray player, so I press the Apple TV button, which brings us over to Apple TV. We could enter its module here, and our controls are working just fine. So this is what you would expect once again. Let's go into some of the cooler features. Let's take a look at our security here, for example. And here's a look at the, uh, the light version of our Honeywell interface and we can see the status disarmed ready to arm great now we see the status updated there armed away you may now exit well, let's go ahead and disarm disarm ready to arm how about our lighting system Lutron. I can turn it on, turn it off, bring it up to a level somewhere in the middle there, 71, for example. And if you see this green slider here, right next to my finger, take that, drag it down, for example, 32. Let's go ahead and turn the system all the way on, or excuse me, all the way off, and that slider has now dropped all the way to zero. Let's bring it back up. Here we are, 74 it tells me. We could increase that on the Lutron switch there, and it reflects very quickly in the iOS device. So there you have it. It was just as simple as dropping that iOS device into the project in Compass Navigator and then creating that zone construction tree before we compiled the project and uploaded. Excellent. So now we've gone through and we've even tested the programming and it was quite simple, wasn't it? Just creating that zone connectivity tree and having that iOS dropped into the project. So yeah, just going back to step number one in that programming tab, adding the controller that is the iOS device, adding the device ID in there. But then also remember in our adding controllers, we did collect the XML uh, or import, I should say, the XML from the Lutron device, which created a separate bidirectional driver because the Zigbee remote control driver, it has all of the one-way control in it. Because after all, the KDZRC300 has no LED display, for example. So it's very, uh, it's, it's one directional control. It's very simplistic. So 
importing the Lutron module is necessary so that we can have uh, collect the appropriate information about the, the program of that Lutron system. What is the zone? Is it just a dimmer? Does it perhaps have scenes? Does it have HVAC um, uh, shades? These sorts of things will automatically populate graphics and all when you import them. And obviously you need all those things on an iOS device if it's all represented, if it's all been programmed into the Lutron. So we move ahead to a sign zone and that zone was already created because we had the uh, Lutron system imported. However, if you're just doing a simplistic, you know, AV system, for example, you're not going to have anything there. You just go to assign zones and double click on any of those. Zone construction, the next step is where we began to drag and drop everything into its proper place. We added the correct parameters of the zone so that the garage had video, lighting and security and then drop the appropriate equipment into place on the correct connectivity ports because in many cases if we press blu-ray for example that is going to have a command on it or a series of commands a macro in order to select that blu-ray player compiling the project is what actually puts those commands on there and also removes our unwanted or unnecessary activities from the far left and you can press the edit system project to review the GUI and Compass Navigator, and then upload to the cloud, download to the iPad, and begin your testing, and you're good to go. So that was C1 part seven, only uh, we're just about done now, and uh, so I would, uh, I'll withhold from saying how many videos are left, just in case in the future we decide to add one or two more, but we're almost done there now, and one of the final things that we will teach you is how to edit existing Zigbee, ZRC, and iOS modules. So thanks so much. We'll see you at C1 Part 8.